Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm very pleased to present my position statement on future of testing and analysis, specifically in this issue of trust in automatically generated code. I'm Abhik Roy Chudhary from the National University of Singapore. So software lifecycle, as we understand it today, we are quite familiar with this lifecycle where a very significant part of the uh, effort, a time and effort and even cost goes in debugging and fixing issues. And as has been told in this very famous book, The Mythical Man Month, adding manpower simply to the software project does not solve the issue. So what uh, we could try to do in this uh, journey towards automatically generated code is to try to make sure that at least the fixes are generated uh, automatically. So that is auto code generation at a micro scale. So correct software evolution via program repair. So uh, this is the uh, current state of the art on automated program repair, where uh, we take in a program that needs fixing and tests a specification and the program repair gives the correct program. That means one that at least passes the tests. Of course, if the tests are uh, not sufficient, then the repairs generated may be overfitting. So to increase trust in this automatically generated code, specifically automatically generated repair, uh, the question is how one can go beyond tests. For this purpose of generating trustworthy program repair, or rather trustworthy code generation at a micro scale, uh, one could look into semantic approaches, uh, rely heavily on the semantic approaches. So program repair, for example, this just as an example, could be given from failed verification attempts. However, this raises the question, verification of what kind of property? And there again, there are research opportunities. So for example, one could look at simple properties like crash freedom and try to do non-trivial program repairs or at least workarounds from there. And there exists a plethora of research opportunities there in trustworthy program repair. So this topic of trustworthy program repair, because program repair, we simply see as uh, automated code generation at a micro scale. So this topic of trustworthy program repair also brings us to this uh, futuristic issue that is coming up, that is how do we automatically generate code and how do we use testing and analysis to give generate more trust in this automatically generated code. So this goes beyond overfitting, which involves having additional test cases for verification. So things like readability, comments and annotation, uh, provenance, all of these are important. And also probably some of the semantic aspects like logical constraints that need to be considered. So to investigate these trust issues in automatically generated code, specifically program repair, in fact, we did a study recently with about 100 practitioners. And these are some of the key elements from that study where a vast majority, about three quarters, say that they are actually willing to generate a review a few, at least a few automatically generated patches. Their trust in the code in the patch will be enhanced if additional artifacts are available. And the artifact that they favor the most are test cases followed by uh, assertions and logical constraints. So this provides us some guidance that there is hope in automatically generated code, specifically automated repair. Uh, in future, we can go beyond uh, simply automatic repair where the program is largely written manually and we only automatically repair one or two lines. There is a new direction brewing. Very recently, there is this effort called the GitHub Copilot that probably uh, we have heard about, which automatically generates code in Python and other languages. The question is, does it provide correct code? As we learn from social media, a lot of people have commented that it really doesn't, but it provides us a very important starting point for the future to talk about automatically generated code. And probably we can think about how we can trust this automatically generated code and automated program repair of the automatically generated code could provide us a, a guidepost towards that direction. So that's my position statement. Thank you very much for listening. Hi, everyone. I'm Jen Dang Su from ETH Zurich. Uh, first, thanks to the organizers, Christian and Xiangyu, for inviting me to participate on this panel. Easter has always been one of my favorite venues and communities. I'll just use the next few minutes to quickly share some of my reflections. Our broader community has made a lot of progress over the past decades. 
which I don't want to dwell on. Instead, let me share this figure that shows the new and cumulative publicly disclosed vulnerabilities. Notice the trend and the big jump from 2016 to 2017. I want to read this figure. The optimistic view would be our work has helped discover more and more vulnerabilities. And the pessimistic view could be despite our work, software is getting more and more buggier. We can discuss this further later. What is the goal of ESTA? That is, of uh, software testing and analysis. Broadly speaking to me, it is about develop, developing the foundations, techniques, and tools for engineering reliable and performing software. And now speaking more narrowly or being more focused, I think it's about this dream that we have to build that ultimate super intelligent, fully automated bug finder, analyzer, verifier, debugger, bug finding bot, and so on. And this is certainly an ambitious goal. Much of our work touches some aspects of the goal. On the other hand, to achieve this goal, we have a serious challenge that I believe that hasn't been tackled head on as much as we could. In the 1960s, our computing pioneers coined the term the software crisis. Now we still face the software crisis even more so as software has gotten much more complex and we depend on it much, much more. The core problem, I think, is the specification crisis that prevents us from adopting many of our techniques. In particular, the two questions that we have to find answers to are, first one, is the system doing what it is, what it is intended to do? Second, is this result returned by the program correct? And indeed, given the program P, we need a property phi to show that P is correct. But typically phi isn't available. Either it is practically unrealistic to do so, or fundamentally, we don't know how to specify, for example, for AI power systems. And this is one of the greatest challenges. And to me, in fact, it is the single greatest challenge for us. We have some partial approaches, but the community hasn't focused much on this fundamental difficulty. Our bike funding tools still focus on crashes. And this is a difficult problem, technically and socially. I hope we can use our collective creativity and hard work to make some good progress on this difficult problem. I don't have a good solution, but finding the right collaboration between human and machine seems to be the right general way forward. So just quickly to summarize, we have had a lot of amazing and successful accomplishments. And I argued that the lack of specification is a big challenge facing us. And here I list uh, several other opportunities, obstacles for us to consider. One is exciting new developments, but be mindful of bandwagons. And uh, there have been a lot of advances, but how to measure true progress that the community and our research has made. And focus on the true audience our work, right, the intended users. And also aim to expand the real impact of the work from our community. And with that, I look forward to the discussions that we're going to have and also the uh, next 30 years of exciting Easter. Hello, my name is Andreas Zeller and I'm a researcher in testing and analysis. It's my pleasure to be here on the panel. I have been a vivid visitor of ISTA uh, since the year 2000. In 2000, I was here to present um, Delta debugging on inputs, which is a technique which automatically reduces the input um, that causes a failure. This was extremely well received at the time and has since become quite a success. A brand name made my career. So I always will have ISTA in, in a fond memory. The techniques that we had been working on at the time at ISTA that we have been discussing are still the same as before and are still problems in a way. Debugging still is a huge problem. It was a problem 20 years ago. It was a problem 40 years ago and it will continue to be a problem if things don't change. We still are 
applying far to conventional methods to debugging in practice, step, 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 print, step, step, step. We have better ways to do debugging. One, in, one better way to do debugging is automated repair, which has been one of the big success stories of software engineering. Really amazing what happened in the field. It also is now being deployed in practice. So if you want to automated repair is uh, a, an automated debugging technique, which has seen some success, I'm very happy about that. But automated repair could, could be so much better if it had more tests to work on. And this has also been a topic in the last 20 years, coming up with better automated testing techniques. We have quite a number of uh, super important tools that also came out of the software analysis and testing committee. We have CLI, we have SAGE, and now the security community has essentially taken over the field as fuzzing. And they are, uh, and uh, not only are they, are they building one fuzzer after another, they're also reinventing techniques that the software engineering community has uh, introduced uh, decades ago. Just uh, reviewed a paper where authors proudly invented model-based testing and so it came so close to model checking, but well, sure, it's uh, nice to see these things reinvented again. Um, and of course, ISTA is not only testing, but also static analysis. But here again, we see techniques that scale so much better and still, and still stay precise and accurate on millions of lines of code. I'm super impressed by that just as well. On the other hand, the systems we are having scale even further, not necessarily in lines of code, but in complexity, because you have parallel code, you have so many different layers of uh, executable code in different languages, which is all extremely hard to analyze statically, let alone symbolically, and which continues to be a big challenge for all sorts of analysis. All these individual techniques would be better if they work together. Automated repair, for instance, could benefit a lot from, automated, from automatically generated tests. Likewise, static analysis, where it fails, you can do testing, and where testing fails, you may be still be able to do analysis. And we need more synergies between these two. On the other hand, we also need more simplicity. We are building tools that create lots and lots of complexity and may be easy to use, but in their intrinsics are very difficult to understand. And we need to make more efforts in creating basic algorithms, in creating basic techniques that can be quickly adapted and adopted in practice just as well. Finally, there's one elephant in the room um, and has been since 20 years. We always assume that all we have is code. And this is our opportunity to analyze and our opportunity to test. But you know, if we had strong specifications of input, output, and behavior, then so many things would be so much easier. So testing would be so much easier because we have oracles. Repairs would be easier because we know, because we can ensure that specific things are simply not going to happen. And all sorts of symbolic analysis, starting analysis, of course, well, they need a specification in the first place. And maybe we should more analyze how we can bring in more humans, their knowledge, their specific and their specification into our tools instead of simply running things on artificial benchmarks. That's my short stance, and I'm looking forward to the discussion. Thank you very much. See you. Hello, everyone. I'm Dong Mei Zhang from Microsoft Research Asia. First, I want to say huge congratulations on the 30th edition of ISTA. This is an important milestone for the community, and we should celebrate. I also want to say thank you to uh, Christian, Xiang Yu, and the organizing committee for organizing a fantastic conference co-located with eCoop. Thanks for inviting me to be on this panel discussion. During today's discussion, I'd like to talk about new opportunities moving forward for the research of software analysis and testing and suggestions for the ISTA community. One opportunity is cloud computing. In the past 15 years, the most significant paradigm shift in the computing industry is the migration to cloud computing, which brings unprecedented opportunities of digital transformation to business, society, and human life. The implication of this is profound. It means that 
cloud computing platforms have become part of the basic infrastructure of the world. Therefore, the non-functional properties of cloud computing platforms, including availability, reliability, performance, efficiency, security, sustainability, etc., become immensely important. In this context, a natural question to ask is how software testing and analysis research can help build and operate cloud platforms and the applications on top of them effectively and efficiently. The characteristics of cloud platforms present huge challenges to the development and operation of such systems. They are distributed by nature, they have massive scale, and they have very high complexity. All of these characteristics are true at every layer of cloud platform, ranging from storage to networking, computing, and beyond. If we want to analyze and test such cloud platforms, how shall we overcome these challenges by improving the existing algorithms and methods? And we need to come up with new algorithms and methods. For example, how to test a build to decide whether it is good to roll out, how to decide how many virtual machines of different types need to be pre-provisioned. -pre there are new problems brought up by cloud platforms. For example, the performance of such systems needs to be continuously monitored. And when there is a job in the performance, the problem needs to be quickly localized. Do these monitoring and diagnosis problems fall into the scope of analysis and testing? Another example is proactive system design, meaning prediction techniques are used in the system, and the system makes decisions not only by taking into account the system's current status, but also its predictive future status. There are interesting problems to analyze and test the performance of individual components and the entire system. Another opportunity is around data. As we know, there is a huge wealth of various types of data available throughout the entire development life cycle of software systems. This is manifested even stronger with the paradigm shift to cloud computing as much more data are available on system runtime and workloads. Over the years, we have seen tremendous mindset shift towards the data-driven culture in software development in both academia and industry. But in practice, there are still many issues around data quality. For example, some data pipelines do not have monitoring mechanism, which may result in missing data undetected. Another example is lacking effective management on data sources and data dependency, which may invalidate the downstream algorithms. One more example is about noisy data. Sometimes there are too many data, but many of them are not helpful to diagnosis. On the contrary, they may become noise and slow down the diagnosis process. All these challenges bring up the research opportunities on systematic quality insurance throughout the entire life cycle of data including instrumentation, collection, analysis, etc. Lastly, one suggestion I have for the community is to actively engage with industry, which will be mutually beneficial. For researchers, if their research results make real-world impact, then that will be a great accomplishment. In addition, the problems in the real software development practice can inspire researchers to come up with meaningful and significant problems to work on. I'll stop here and look forward to the discussion with the other panelists. Thank you.